Okay, when we compare fractions, we're basically talking about um, using the greater than, less than, or equal symbol. Now, if we have the same denominator, then it becomes very simple. So let's say we're looking at using elevenths. Okay, three elevenths and six elevenths. Okay, so if I took a pizza and broke it up into 11 pizzas, pieces, and I, one, I pulled away six of them to one side and three of them to another, it'd be pretty easy to tell that six elevenths is greater than three elevenths. Now, sometimes when it has the same numerator and a different denominator, it can be a little tricky at first until you realize what we're actually asking for. Okay. So let's say I have three um, fourths, excuse me, and three eighths. Now when you guys were in second grade and we first started doing these um, types of problems, most people would say, well, three eighths is greater because it has an eight in it, and eight is more than four. But you have to look at the fraction, and we're talking about the fraction, we're talking about the size of the piece that we're, that we're using. So I'm gonna take a square, and you know me, I like to eat cake and talk about cakes all the time. I'm gonna break this first one into four pieces, okay? And I'm going to break this one into eight pieces. There's my four, and to make it eight, I'm gonna put some diagonal lines. And now I have eight pieces, okay? Now I'm gonna color in, shade in the numerator, okay? So in this top one right here, three-fourths, I'm shading in three of those pieces. And then this one, I have to shade in three of these pieces, too. And as you can see, three-fourths is much bigger than three-eighths. So when the numerators are the same, whichever one has the smaller denominator is the greater fraction. Okay, the story I told you guys today, if I have a cake I'm only going to, I want to share it with as few people as possible in order to get the most amount of cake. So in this point in time, we're only sh breaking it into pieces for four people, and this one we're breaking into pieces for eight people. Now it does get a little trickier when we don't have the same denominator or numerator. Let me show you real quick what I mean. Let's say that I have... two-fifths and three-tenths. One might be tempted to say, well, the three and the ten are bigger, so I know that two-fifths is less than three-tenths. Okay. But I don't have the same denominator or numerator, so I can't really figure that out. So what I'm going to do is I need to find the same denominators, okay? I need to find the same denominators. And I'm going to look at these fractions and see if there's any way I can make this denominator become this denominator, or this denominator become this denominator. Now I look, if I have 5, I can easily turn 5 into 10. And I can turn 5 into 10 by multiplying the top and bottom by the same number. I can multiply the top by 2 and the bottom that's going to leave me with a new fraction, but it's still going to be the same equivalent fraction. And we talked about a chapter ago that you can, if you multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing, we're going to have equivalent fractions. So this turns into 4, 2 times 2 is 4, 
5 times 2 is 10. And I didn't do anything to this one, so it's 3 tenths. Okay. And with that, I can see I have the denominators are the same. And when you have the same denominator, you just look at the numerator. So 3 tenths and 4 tenths, well, I know that 4 tenths is greater than 3 tenths. So I know that 2 fifths is greater than 3 tenths because they're equivalent fractions. Okay, they are equivalent fractions. Let's do another one with the same same type of process we're going to take. 2 thirds and 6 ninths. Now, they're not the same numerators or denominators, but I can make this denominator um, the same as this one. And I do that by multiplying it by 3, because 3 times 3 equals 9. So I have to multiply the top 2, because I want equivalent fractions. In order to get the equivalent fraction, I have to either multiply or divide the top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by, by the same number. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. And I didn't do anything with this 6 ninths on this side, so it's the same. Okay. I multiply both by the same. Now I have the same denominators, and I have the same numerator. So I know that 6 ninths is equal to 2 6 ninths. So I know that 2 thirds is also equal to 6 ninths. Okay. Now if Every time I could just look at fractions that had the same denominator, the same numerator, or ones where I only had to change one of the fractions to figure out which one was greater or less than, that would be way too easy. But unfortunately, that isn't always the case. Now I'm going to look at two numbers, or two fractions, where I can't just do something to one of them to make the... the the denominator is the same. So I'm going to look at 3 tenths, okay, and I'm going to look at 1 third. Okay, 3 tenths and 1 third. These denominators aren't the same. They're not common. Okay, When they're the same, we call them common denominators. And I can't just multiply this one by, by an integer to figure out what this is. I can't go 2 times 2, well that's 6, or sorry, 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3, well that's just 9, but then 3 times 4 is 12. See, I can't, I can't do that. There's no way for me to turn this into this one. But I have a new trick. Not a new trick, but a trick that I'm going to use. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator of the other fraction. That might not make sense to you yet, but let me show you. If I look over here at 3 tenths, in order, I, I need to get common denominators so I can compare them. But in order to do that, I have to look and see. We already figured out there's no way for me to make this 1 third, make this 3 into a 10. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, this denominator and I'm going to multiply it by the 3, the other fraction, denominator. So this 3 tenths is going to multiply it by the denominator of the other fraction. 3 times 3, 10 times 3. I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by this denominator down here. Okay. But I'm not done yet because when I do that, I get 9. Let me use another color. 9 and 30. Those still aren't the same. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply this numerator and denominator by the denominator of the other fraction. So 1 times 3 equals 3. And, oh, sorry, 1 times 10 equals 10. And then 3 times this number right here, 10, equals 30. Okay, so even though I made a mistake, I can still use these to compare. Okay, so I'm going to look at this one right here and this one right here. 9 thirtieths and 10 thirtieths. I know that this one is larger. It's greater. So I know that 3 tenths is less than 1 third. Okay. And the reason I was able to do that was because I was able to figure out I was able to figure out that if I multiply this one by this numerator and denominator and this denominator by this numerator and denominator, I'm going to get the same common denominators. So 9 thirtieths and 10 thirtieths. I want to try it one more time just to make it easier on all of us. Okay. Four sixths and let's say five sevenths. Now there is no way for me to figure out for me to get this sixth to become a seventh. It just doesn't work. So what I need to do is I need to multiply this fraction by this denominator. And I need to multiply this fraction by this denominator. Now, 5 times 6 and 7 times 6. That equals 30 over 42. Then down here. four times seven and six times seven equals twenty eight over forty two. Now I have two fractions here I can look at. I can look at my twenty eight over forty two and thirty over forty two. Well thirty 30 over 42 is greater. And this comes from this fraction. So when I look down here, 4, 6, and 5, 7, I know that 5, 7 is greater than 4, 6. 4, 6 is less than 5, 7 because I had to multiply by the denominator of the other fraction. Okay.